All right, welcome to the June meeting of the UI Interest Group. We don't have a formal agenda today. We're going to talk about keyboard shortcuts, uh, which we discussed a little bit uh, during our last meeting um, and then uh, by email on the um, listserv. And I don't have that email pulled up at the moment, but I can get there if anybody needs me to grab that. Um, I don't have any slides or a formal like outline of what we're going to talk about today. I just wanted to open the floor and maybe Elizabeth can kick us off by reminding us um, what we talked about last month. <laughs> <It's a> oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me. I'll have to have a talk with myself and, oh, no. and uh, remind myself what, um, sorry. That's okay. I can put you on the spot. Does anybody else have the yeah, please. and uh, can recall? I don't know if this is what was talked about, but I know this has come up in something else where there used to be, and, and this did come up in another conversation. And this is another reason I feel very dis. I'm used to just going into my like production database oh, yeah. and like looking at things. And I'm like, I don't have access to that any longer. <laughs> so I have to go into a community server. So I have become very, very grateful for that. But there used to be in the drop down menus of the client, um, similar to what you see in lots of applications, uh, the, of course, the, the label for the action. And then over on the right hand side, there being um, some indication of that, that shortcut. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and it used to be in Evergreen. And it isn't any longer. Right. We can put that back. Uh, it is actually in the new Mark editor in the little, there's a tiny toolbar just for the Mark editor that has like the add button where you go to add and like a new 008 or 07 right. or something like that. And that little tiny menu does have the keys uh, showing. Right. Uh, but not so in the EG2 main menu system. Right. We can do it in the main menu system. Um, that poor menu file we have touched so many times in the past 18 months because it is a oh, hub of accessibility problems. And so um, I've been tweaking it a lot. Uh, I think this is a good time to change it because, um, you know, 3.13 had like a lot of major new features that required a lot of changes to the menus. But so far the stuff that's on 3.14 doesn't affect the menus as much. Mm -hmm. um, we'll change it slightly for record buckets and a little bit for the new circulation interface, but we don't have like 15 major new modules on the roadmap right now, thank God. Yeah. Um, so this would actually be a great time to go and, and put those in. Um, the <sighs> There is no automatic way to say, just print the keyboard shortcut that goes with this menu item, because none of those menu items are generated in any automatic way. They're just printed out in HTML. So mm -hmm. we will just have to go into the HTML and do a little KBD tag. Right. Uh, and put in whatever the shortcut is that, that corresponds to that item. And anybody who knows HTML can do that, and I can show one or two examples of exactly what the markup needs to look like. Um, so I, I do have a question about that though too, mm -hmm. uh, because of course we're relying on the interaction between the keyboard and a browser mm -hmm. and the application. Um, and those, shortcuts can be edited by a user no so it, so it does evergreen like that html does force the shortcut to work if you're in the application okay that that answers my question yes in the future we are hoping to make them remappable um mm -hmm. at the moment since we don't have a robust user preference infrastructure right now uh it would have to be a workstation setting and that's nobody really wants to deal <laughs> with that for every workstation, workstation. setting. <laughs> right. So 
kind of uh, my mental roadmap for this um, is that we need to beef up uh, our user preferences UI first. And then the next step will be putting in a UI for various user level preferences that could be changed like this. Um, and definitely keyboard shortcuts is one of them. Um, we don't have any shortcuts that are like single letter keys, which if that were the case, we would be required to make them remappable by accessibility rules. Our lavars are like, you know, control something, shift something, or the function keys, which are excluded from the WCAG rule. So um, we don't have a pressing need to make them remappable, but it would be awfully nice. Um, and especially for our um, non-English audiences, it would be great to be able to remap those so that the letter combination matches the word in their language rather than the word in yeah. English. Um, oh, yeah, how does that work on keyboards that don't even have English characters, like Japanese keyboards? The you app has to redefine them. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. The app either redefines those or the keyboard shortcut doesn't work. So um, it's a it's an internationalization problem as well. And if you want to see a community working through this, you can go to make.wordpress.org and look for the core team. And they have done extensive work on making keyboard shortcuts customizable. And there's you can see screenshots of the UI that they're iterating through with their design team. Um, and it's driven for them primarily by internationalization. Um, I've been kind of keeping an eye on their progress and stealing from them as they as they work through that. Uh, I'll I'll let them with their larger community and and more involved international user base. Uh, I'll let them work through those design issues and then I'll borrow what they've come up with. Um, so Stephanie, mm -hmm. we can edit the HTML for those menus and put the shortcuts in. And that sounds like it would be a huge improvement because then people could look in the menus and know what the shortcuts are. Yay. And my it also, only, I'm, oh, sorry, and, Ben. Oh, I was, so my only thought there besides, yay, let's do it immediately, <laughs> is given the other projects around keyboard shortcuts that you think may be happening in the future, would it be worth like separating that out into a JSON file or something like that now? No. We should put it off and just do the quick fix. Okay. Yeah. When we have everything in Angular, uh, it might be more feasible to start generating our menus through some sort of object iteration mm -hmm. process. Um, we don't have everything in Angular right now, so there's no point. And the other complication is that some of our menu items are not URL routes. They are just like buttons that trigger functions like um, retrieve last patron or things like that. Those don't go to a specific route. They, they call a function and then it routes where it needs to go. So those are handled differently in the HTML. Uh, the links are A tags and the buttons are button tags. Um, and we would have to massage things to make that happen in some sort of loop. Uh, so that file is huge. It's it's staff slash nav dot component dot html. Um, it's really long. There are hundreds of items in it, uh, but we just go through it, and when we make a change, we <laughs> copy it in a hundred places, and that's how it works. Um, so it would be fairly easy to do that. Um, the uh, we might need to add a CSS rule. I believe those buttons and things are already Flexbox items because of the icons. Um, so what we might need to do is just put in a CSS rule that's like, you know, the KBD tag, uh, 
margin start is auto. And that should push it all the way to the right. Um, but I can fiddle with that if somebody's doing the HTML and they're not super familiar with uh, CSS flex properties, just give me a buzz in uh, IRC and I'll take a look at it. Um, I'm not volunteering to do this because my time is promised elsewhere for the next couple of months. Uh, and I don't know if I will have a chance to look at this. So uh, I will tell you in great detail what needs to be done, but I'm gonna see if someone else will take it on. I'm also not gonna promise to do it because I don't like to promise things that I'm not completely sure about. Um, but I do think this sounds fairly straightforward with a little bit of guidance. And so I do have a few other projects that also fall in there, although they're not the same kind of thing, but I would be willing to meet offsite <laughs> outside of this meeting with somebody uh, about um, looking at that. I don't mind to dig around in HTML and CSS and those types of things. and. I and Steph that. Stephanie, I have somebody on on my staff, Christine Morgan, sister huh? of Michelle oh, yeah. Morgan. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but the but uh, she's done a lot with the menus. She's added some things to the menus for us, and she's she's done a lot of uh, that kind of thing. And and uh, this sounds like something she would uh, be willing to work on. Of course, she's out today, so she's she's working from home today. So I, you know, but but this does sound. Uh, this is something we really want, and this, this does sound like like something that she would be able to do, and and would do a good and careful and neat job. Awesome. So maybe she can meet with you and Ruth offsite and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, look at that. Yeah, I think that that mm -hmm. would be great. I think that there's a maybe an administrative component to this that I'm not really talking about right now, but in terms of like tracking it, um, what exactly. We, you want and then and then the doing is separate from the describing so and ben you mentioned that that the um having the keyboard shortcuts on the menu is is useful because if somebody forgets one or whatever they can easily go look it up but i think as important is the fact that people are every time they go to the menu to do something they're seeing the keyboard shortcut and and sort of learning them almost passively or or th you yeah. know but I mean people may go to the menu now and think like I wish they were a keyboard shortcut for that and that doesn't happen when the or menu has a, a you know a, a keyboard shortcut um this Stephanie, is how I think a yep. lot of people learn keyboard shortcuts yeah yeah so. well I don't think they sit down with a list and and like no no recite them like the like the times tables you know like it's a, I I think that you know, you you kind of learn, and you only learn the ones that you use all the time. So, you know. No, I've done all of those things. Like yeah. if I was doing a task over and over again, I was like, this is a drag. Yeah. And then I would go and look for the keyboard shortcut in a menu system or something like that. But then I've also at times like happened upon a list. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a gold mine of everything in the whole wide world. <laughs> and then start like, like trying new things. So I think that there is, from my perspective, uh, in, in experience, there is value in both. And it really is dependent on uh, what is more valuable, depending on the thing that you're trying to do and when you're trying to do it. And, and maybe even the mood that you're in. Yeah. <laughs> All of those things. So. Well, I also find there's a difference um, between, <laughs> for me, there's a difference between when I'm sitting at my desktop computer, as I am now, and it has a mouse, and I like using the mouse, versus when I'm using my laptop, and I hate the touchpad on it, and, you know, like, I, it's it's just, there are lots of sort of situational things exactly. that, yeah. For sure. And yes, including mood, <laughs> you know. Um, Stephanie, right now, if I'm correct, um, we were on 312. Um, it, to get to the list of keyboard shortcuts, you have to do one thing if you're on an Angular page and another thing if you're not. So control H on one and, mm -hmm. you know, question mark for, for the other. Does Is that going to affect in any way the, are we going to have any of the so, same kind of issues with the menus or with having them on the menus or? or what? Yep. So we will need to edit the two menus separately because the Angular JS uh, mm -hmm. part has its own menu file that is different. 
the HTML can be the same, but uh, in several cases, the actual keyboard shortcut may be different. Um, if that's the case, we could talk about unifying them, <laughs> but we might be uh, discommoding certain people who are used to the old shortcuts. Um, I do think we could probably um, make control question mark work across both uh, and probably control H uh, so that you don't have to remember which one to use just to get to the help for the keyboard shortcuts. Well, it's not obvious, always obvious to people whether they're on an Angular page or, or not. That's really for not sure. how people think about it. And mm -hmm. Weirdly, um, a uh, something that came in in 3.11 or 3.12 uh, that I think is was a great idea of making the um, the settings menu look the same in grids, whether it was angularized or not. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great, except for that takes away what was like a slight hint of which kind of page you were on. And I, I did worry about that. Yeah, I don't think that's that's not a reason to not do do that but uh um you know i i uh and anything that makes makes this a little easier and uh mm -hmm. my people would be very happy just knowing that we're committed to having those back on the on the drop downs now we have the one bug that sierra shared in the chat for the fact that the keyboard shortcuts aren't within the menu um, and I'm thinking some of what has been talked about today should probably go into that bug. Mm -hmm. um, should we also have a second bug for the fact that when we get to the point of being able to um, customize the shortcuts, that there's more work that needs to be done? I'm just, I'm trying to think of ways to like, avoid what happened last time, which is we moved from Zool to the web client and they just went away. Yeah. So we don't want to go from getting them back in the web client to being able to customize shortcuts and just having them all disappear from the menu again. Right. So I think we need to like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we will need a separate bug for that. Uh, what I plan to do is to file one for making the keyboard shortcuts customizable. And I will just note in there that we will need to adjust the way we do them in the nav menus. Perfect. Um, to reflect the customized shortcut rather than the original one. Because I think, yeah, having the shortcuts come back would be fantastic. Yeah, I agree. I did work on this um, very early on when I did not understand Angular very well yet. Uh, I tried various things to, um, try to add them. Uh, specifically, I was looking at just adding the one for help to get the keyboard shortcut <laughs> thing to the help thing in the thing. Um, and I got a little stuck in my head on how the components interact and encapsulation and Angular's weird little hierarchy. But I realized that I was making it much too difficult um, because I was basically trying to like automatically get whatever keyboard shortcut was associated with the function back out programmatically. And we don't need to do that. We can just type it. <laughs> well, it's and tedious, but. Um... So with what Ruth was saying about like the admin kind of piece of this, um, should we be putting together a document that lists all of the menu items for Angular and all of the menu, menu items for Angular G JS and then start putting what the shortcut actually is. That would be awesome. Does anybody want to fire up a quick spreadsheet and dump it in the- I can do that item? unless somebody else is dying to. Go for it. Go for it, right? <laughs> we okay. grab the link. We can put it in uh, our little agenda item number three here where I have left a blank <laughs> bullet point. Um, you knew there was a, a document coming. I did, <laughs> I did. Well, I left it there for us to fill in and take notes. Um, I mean, get it in the right Google Drive before we go to <laughs> The number of times I have started a file on my personal account and then got, ah. Oh, <laughs> some facility around here. Um, 
what was I going to say? Wait, does our, does this interest group, does it have its own? No. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make one. Well, it has a group, but it, we don't have like a drive. Well, we I'm gonna, have... I'm gonna make a little folder in our interest Thank groups you. then. That'd be awesome. I'll move all the agendas in there so that we have them in one spot. Okay. They're just on my account right now. You look, I'm like doing something kind of crazy. Look at you. I'm gonna Being put like it... a project manager. <laughs> so to speak. Oh, I'm so glad that I have you all. <laughs> I want to do all the things, but I cannot do them alone. <laughs> There is not enough time in a day to no. do all the things. There genuinely isn't. Listen, y'all, time's not real, so it's fine. <laughs> probably Let's say we just keep on keeping on until we do something else. Yep. Um, how do I want to, should I be sharing this? That's the question. Let me look at this one. Well, and Stephanie, you talked about like demonstrating where to, do this is that something you yeah. could do on this call yeah i can do that real quick let me stop sharing the agenda file um let me see where i'm at uh okay and then access okay great um I'm looking, looking, looking. Okay. I think I just completely made up your <laughs> email address. Slear at equinoxoli.org. No. Okay. Stephanie.leary. Thank you. Like, I'm just going to create an email address. <laughs> oh, there's just your face. As that works I... better. Huh? I said, there's your face. That works better. That's me. Yeah. Just as I started, uh, we had, we got a new policy of like standardizing everybody's um, email address to a certain way, which really irritated me because my name is long. <laughs> uh, okay. They've done it twice before that too. You just don't know it. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So All I'm going right. to share that with you so that you can decide you. how else it should be shared. All right. Um, uh, let me share. Oh, oh, and I'll also change the permissions on it so that people can. Okay. So I pulled up the access key info component, which is the one that prints the help table. Um, oops. And I was right. The second time we did split this up so that each letter or modifier key is in its own little KBD tag. And then there are pluses in between them. Um, and on the div around it, the only class that you actually need is the shortcut dash key combo. And then I think in the CSS file for this component, I did something, yeah these these little styles here we would need to copy into the nav component css file so line 18 onward out of access key dash info dot component dot css okay so let me switch over to the actual nav component which is where we have um, all of the menu items. Um, so let me, I'm kind of at the end of the file here. Let me, let me just go back up to the top. What's your extension that shows you the indentation like that? Uh, that is rainbow indent, I think. Let me look at my, I like that. Book. I love it. 
Uh, Sorry, off topic. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, Indent Rainbow, yeah. It's fantastic. Installing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, that's the home button. That's okay. So here's the search sub menu. Um, right. So what I was trying to do the first time I looked at this was to grab this key spec basically, and then like do something automatically to just make it show up in in here. And I don't think we should do that. Uh, so for all of these menu items, we have two spans. We have one for the icon, which has the icon keyword. And that doesn't have the I18N flag on it because we don't want to translate the keyword. That's a material icon keyword that needs to remain in English. <laughs> um, and then we have a span that is translatable that is the, the words. So I think what we're going to want to do is add a third span. I don't even remember now what I said, keyboard. Something like that. No. Um, I don't know. Whatever. Oh. Whatever I had in the other window. I think it just popped up trying to, yeah, show you. No, it, it didn't because that, that class doesn't exist in this file and VS Code's not that smart. Um, let me get rid of that. Okay, now you can see it a little bit better. Uh, then we're going to do, oh, we and we do want to translate this, I think. Right, and then we're gonna do KBD. Oops. That does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What? <clears throat> pardon me. What is the alt for? Um, I think it's the I, alt key, isn't it? Pardon? Is it the alt key? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so I was looking at the the key spec, which is is the combo, which is wrong. Huh? It's step four. The, the key spec is wrong. You just have to hit F4. Oh, well, neat. All right. Well, I will copy this and put it on one that actually has two things. Um, and I, I'm wondering too, because I just tested it both with the Angular and Angular JS, and F4 works in both. Oh, great. So, um, I will save this file uh, and put a little collab branch up so that y'all can get this and you don't have to copy what I'm doing. Um, I, I'm on a different branch, but I can fix that real quick. Uh, let me go down to one that has two keys. Here we go. I'm wondering and now if this one is correct. I wonder if oh. just F2 works on that one. <laughs> nope. Um, F2 is check out or check in. So shift F2 does take you to capture holds. Okay. Good to know. Oh, I didn't put this in the span. Crap. I didn't copy all of it. Hold on. Let me grab that. I mean, this definitely looks like once you have the like initial coding, mm -hmm. pretty much anybody can go in and just update the like copy paste and update the 
actual values. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Let me just go ahead and copy that CSS that I mentioned into the nav file, and I'll just make that part of this collab. Uh, component CSS. God, this thing is long. No, I'll put it right at the end, even though, no, that's a media query. <laughs> okay, I'll put it here. Ah, sometimes VS Code is a little too helpful. Uh, I'm just gonna do this. And then we can take out this MS auto nonsense. Okay, there we go. All right, so I will check this in um, in just a minute to a collab and I will, well, let me go ahead and do that while y'all are on so that you can see. Um, oops, I didn't realize I had a watcher going. Uh, oh, crap. It's because we're all watching. Of course. I'll revert that later. Okay. There we go. Uh, where's my stashes? Do, 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 do. Aha. Great. All right, that's messy. Feel free to just grab that commit and totally drop my contribution to it and cherry pick it, rework it, whatever. I just wanted to put that on a server somewhere uh, so that you could all see it. And I will go grab the link. For those of you who don't use the branches all that often. I added a link to the spreadsheet into our notes today. Thank you. And then do you want to put your link to the branch at, in the same spot? Yes. It do. should probably also go into the bug. Sure. Now, where did I put... Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. There we go. All good. Now someone's going to ask me how to do it in AngularJS, and I will tell you right now, I can't remember. <laughs> I mean, even if we just got it done in Angular to start with, then, yeah. then you know, it becomes a a contest to see, do we get it done in AngularJS, or do we get rid of the AngularJS interfaces first? Which one happens first? We can get it done in AngularJS. It's just, uh, I can't remember where that file is. And Stephen may know off the top of his head because he works in AngularJS more often than I do. 
I guess so. Uh... <laughs> which is to say you, you work on it ever. Which <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Hardly ever. Yeah, the CSS is laid out, poorly thought out in <laughs> Angular it is, JS. It is different. There's like, yeah. there's like six files of it, and mm -hmm. one of them is huge. It's awful. I know I've touched it recently because I, I messed with it a little bit for our dark mode collab branch. Um, well, if we got fine. it to the Angular uh, menus having the shortcuts, but not the Angular JS, then that would be a uh, way that people could tell which one they were on. It's true. I can tell because the shape of the house icon is slightly different. There's some color differences in mm -hmm. menu yeah, bars. Yeah. Well, and if you're on a grid... Oh, I think has... I, like, changed the color differences during the dark mode branch. <laughs> so they're more similar now. Yeah, they are. I know, but... we're taking away all the stuff that distinguishes them, which is good for users, but I was say, for, for your average user, is not a terrible thing to have it all look the same. Yeah, no, that and that is the goal. But for us, it's a pain because, no, we don't, we don't know which one's what. We'll just delete the Angular JS stuff and see what breaks. There you go. Just nuke it. And yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Isn't that what testing is? Always. Just trying to break things. Yeah. Right? That's that's all we do. We break it or we find out it's broken and then we right. confirm if it is still broken. <laughs> and developing is just trying to make it so that those of us who go in to try to break things can't. Yes. <laughs> or when we're feeling especially clever, we break them in ways that no one can see. Or no one realizes Indeed. until it's too late. Yes. Let me tell y'all, when I worked as a software tester um, for a health IT company, we had one of our developers just need a really large number. So we put a keyboard smash in and nice. it was for order numbers. Um, and then we signed on Mayo Clinic and they like quickly exceeded that order number and it broke everything and we had no idea. And when we realized that it was like some unrelated piece of code just because we needed to pick a big number and just smashed, you know, that coding mm -hmm. and development is always fun work, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially, I have to imagine, in the healthcare industry. Hey, I left that thinking that I hated software testing, and now I've come full circle, and I'm a software testing librarian, so. Yeah, and it's great when people's <laughs> lives don't depend on it, right? <laughs> exactly. Context really matters. I'd rather help people yes. get their books than their meds. Yep. <laughs> Context matters, always. Cool. Steven, I see your screenshot and that's awesome. I think we can tweak it to force at least like one rem in between. Uh, but that's fantastic. I think we should probably just put, uh, I don't know if we want a Martin. I think it definitely, I think what you're saying is it definitely needs a touch of space between capture yeah. holds and the actual thing. For sure. Yeah. But it looks really cool. It looks fantastic. Uh, I can't remember if those menus are constrained to a specific width. Are they stuck at like 150 pixels or something like that? Or 200? I want to say that they are. We may need to bump that up. Well, I think it's bumped it itself. Did it? Okay. Because possible, either that or it just fits. Mm -hmm. Because missing pieces is the longest mm -hmm. on that list, mm -hmm. and it's got a little bit little larger bit of than space. expected margin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we can fiddle with that. That's easy. Yeah. Part of me wants to see less space, and I think this is where you were referring to the rem. I'm sorry, more space to the left of the shortcut. Yes. But I'd also like to see less space um, around the plus mm. on uh -huh. the other edges. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, which especially if we have a long shortcut could keep it from hitting those limits quite as soon in terms of getting too wide. That's interesting. I went ahead and put space, like I put white space in the file, but if we don't put any white space between the KBD tags, they'll be smushed up against each other and the plus sign. Yeah, it might need some some tweaking to get it exactly right, but my, my instinct is less space around the plus. I think you're right. Well, if there is a shortcut for pull list for holds request, that would be a good one as a like another test because that one's almost the width of the existing menu. Mm -hmm. That one's I don't long. think there's a shortcut for scan items as missing pieces, but I could be mistaken about that one. Well, that's I it. hate that label. I just I I hope nobody loves it so very much. And then no, no, Ruth. There's just so many words. I mean, just call it a holds pull list. Oh, the pull list. I thought you were talking about missing pieces. Because I was going to say, no. I have so many other issues with myth missing pieces. Oh, up yeah, to the yeah. fact so that there's two interfaces for it right now. Yeah. No, that, that's no... different. I choose to ignore that one because I just, yeah. It has I mean, issues. We could rename it holds pull list. Because that's what I always call it. And that's what it's called elsewhere. Isn't that what it's yeah. called on? But yes, Sierra is right. Once we change it, everybody will say they loved it. Or at least some people will say. Well, if we can say it's an accessibility issue, then that just shuts them down. Pass it on Launchpad and put a needs discussion tag on it and see what happens. Mm, no, you don't have to do that. I can just be angsty about it. No, don't be angsty. If, if you're angsty oh, about no, I'll be, it. If I'm not angsty about that, I'll be angsty about something else. It really well, doesn't matter. This is like... It, I, I might put it in as a bug though, because when documenting and doing videos and stuff, trying to call it by its real name, it's really it's, wordy. It really <laughs> is wordy. And you, you're you like looking at it, okay, this action, it's like a phrase. It's not just a descriptive action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it should be an interface title, not anyway. It's a, it's a, it's a grammar thing for me. Well, like and if you open it up, it's called the holds pull list. Yeah. So, I mean, this comes back to a whole different issue that we have tickets on or yeah. uh, bugs on of uh, menu uh, names and the actual interface names not matching. Yes. All right. Which is another problem with the Angular, Angular JS divide in that they're named different things. And yeah, a lot of the a lot of those issues, though, are on the local and server admin menu pages as opposed to menu drop downs. So doesn't that alleviate some of the Angular versus Angular JS because that page is always the same? What you get to from it might not be. Mm hmm. But I want to say both those pages are Angular now. Maybe. They are Angular. Anyways, Ruth, I will put in a bug for that one and you can confirm it. Oh, OK. I'd love to do that. <laughs> and if All anybody right. like somehow has some amazing insight how we can like remove the word administration from so many of the links in the administration menu. Yeah. I see you laughing, Stephanie, and now I know I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. Like how many times do we have to repeat ourselves? <laughs> we know it's the admin menu. I, I mean, I can't help but think both admin is a well-known abbreviation, but also in almost any other program, wouldn't it just be called settings? Yeah. Yeah. Like, why aren't we using the word settings? Because <laughs> we wanted. We're thinking about permission groups, and we have to make sure that we like clarify everything that we're thinking about the same time as we're writing it down. Still That's sounds it. like settings to me. It is settings. You're a hundred percent correct. <laughs> so, so the menu is administration, it seems like it, and it's server it seems settings. Seems like it was in local settings. 
what I want is one big settings page that either has different sections for local and server or just lists them alphabetically and and then it's completely or not permission based on, based on what you access or don't. Yep. Mm -hmm. And also, if you can't access it because of permission says you can't access this because of permissions, rather than just having a blank screen that somehow somebody's like, oh, my goodness, the server's down. No, the server's not down. In fact, it's working perfectly. It's just not telling you what it's doing. It's gaslighting you. The server's okay. gaslighting. Yeah. Well, and now that we have reports and simple reports, <laughs> maybe we need a reports menu to pull it out of admin because it doesn't really fit with everything else that's there. No. Because you use reports on a regular basis. If you do reporting, you probably do the administration pages less frequently, except maybe acquisitions. Simple reports added complexity. <laughs> Oh my goodness sakes a lot. I love I, Evergreen. It sounds like I don't. I love it. And somebody was dunking on it earlier today in Indiana. Of course, I'm not there, so I need to mind my business, but because they're getting rid of their statewide res resource sharing thing that uses share it. Oh which, yeah. Let's talk about share it. Let, let's not actually talk about share it at all. I um, use it here in BC. Do you? It's so, you know, a union catalog for, for the BC libraries. And that's what it, it was for this thing called CIRCS, which is S-R-C-S, -S, as opposed to Circulation CIRCS. Um, clever, confusing. But it costs a lot of money, and, and the whole program didn't, apparently, I don't get these lists anymore, these emails through the lists, they're shutting it down, which is completely appropriate. They pay so much money for this thing that doesn't get used a whole lot. The state library does. Well, somebody's like, I think this is just the state trying to force libraries to join Evergreen Indiana. And I'm like, no, it's not. That was an expensive thing. And oh, by the way, this was meant to connect academics with publics, not publics with Evergreen. You know how you join a public with Evergreen Indiana? You join Evergreen Indiana. That's how you do it. Otherwise, you go get mad. Go get mad. But anyway. I didn't say any of those things. I just thought them so much that they had to come out here in the safe place. Sorry. <laughs> no, I this think this meeting is being recorded. I'm applauding your restraint, Ruth. I don't mind myself being recorded. I'm going to take, I'm going to be like the sin eater for the whole community. <laughs> <laughs> well, we started with group therapy and we're ending with sin eating. So I think that this meeting is winding down. Uh, is there anything else we need to cover before I end the recording? One quick question. Yeah. I like that idea of a unified um, settings mm -hmm. page so much. I don't think anyone cares whether the setting is local as their first thing. Like, it's good to know. But it's not when you're looking for it, you want to know where to change it. And then knowing where the change is going to take effect is like a secondary thing for some people. Mm -hmm. Do we have something on Launchpad for that? Because I will go add heat if we do it. If not, I want it to exist. We don't. We do have a link on this group's wiki page to a Word doc from over a year ago where I floated that idea as one of our first projects. And... Um, Got a little bit shot down by the developer team uh, because they kind of like having those two separate pages for permissions reasons. But I think we can revisit that issue. And I don't believe there is a launchpad bug for it. So I would love it if you want to take what's in that document and file one. So Remind me how I how find this document. That, that. I mean, <laughs> is find. there any stomach for adding like all of the settings into like not just server and local, but also acquisitions, mm -hmm. serials, booking, all of those things into one. Th and then maybe having, I don't know, like expandable menus or something that lets you get into that. So you're dealing with all of your call number things in one space. You're dealing with all of your statistical categories in one space. 
or whatever. I mean, there's, um, but yes, putting check, everything. Check everything. out this, this document. That's where I was going. Did you, um, did you put it? Thank in the, you. Yeah, it's in the chat. Lovely. Sounds <laughs> fine. We're scary or funny. Um, I would love to resurrect this idea and put some work into it. Um, so, oh, I was nice. yeah. As I was first starting out with with Evergreen, this was one of the things I tripped over constantly as I was like setting up to work on a bug. It was like, where do I go to even get the data into the setting that I need to do this thing? And it still trips me up. I forget what's local and what's uh, server. And you spend so much time just searching. And if you have a local customization for it, and mm -hmm. I can imagine that this would really impact perhaps Sierra, definitely Equinox, anybody at Mobius that has multiple sites or multiple consortia and mm -hmm. customizations. Did we move it to local admin? I don't remember. Yeah. Did we remove this actual link so nobody can access this interface? Is that why we can't find it, even though it's actually in there? Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, yeah. back when you put the doc out in the first place, I did add some comments to it. Because mm -hmm. the big thing for us um, would be that we definitely, whether it's a done through permissions or such, you know, we we wouldn't want our library staff to be coming across everything that's currently in the server admin menu when trying to find the other stuff because we only want them to be able to see what they need to use. And currently, mm -hmm. the only thing on the server admin menu that they ever go to is the organizational units to set mm -hmm. like phone numbers and stuff because and I mean honestly like we don't touch half of what's on the server admin menu either usually yeah. um so I'm very much like let's put it all together but let's make sure there's a way that library that staff are not going to end up yeah or yeah library staff aren't going to end up overwhelmed mm -hmm. by all these things that are absolutely irrelevant to them like all of the yeah. mark facet search oh yeah like <laughs> i don't even know what some of those do <laughs> i will right, say right. though i wouldn't want the visibility to be as simple as you can only see what you can change because sometimes for someone like me it's really nice to be able to see what the settings are even though i can't change them it would it would be nice to have something similar to what google does so that you have i mean not commenter you're not going to be commenting on it but you can sometimes have something that's visible and something that's editable mm -hmm. but i think you want two layers possibly because yes. you want mm -hmm. there's going to be some things that you just don't want showing period mm -hmm. but yeah. then there's going to be like you're saying ones that you want to be able to see but just not be able to do anything with and we've done that um recently with uh, uh action triggers um, we've given our libraries view permission so they can actually go in and look at their action trigger templates. Um, they just can't actually edit their action triggers themselves. Yeah, right. and I that's think super of handy. The shelving location says a first one here. CW Mars doesn't let me change them myself. But when I create a ticket, I can create a much better ticket if I can see what the current ones are. Um, and similarly for all the um, circulation modifiers and um, Circulation you know, I'm thinking of the, the rules and how, how they interact with the modifiers. I am going to do a terrible ticket if I don't know what we already have. Um, well, Ben, so. we, we do get a lot of bad tickets. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, and actually, for, for some of this stuff, I know there are places that if I bother to log into the staff site, I can see them too. But it's nice to have them be right there in Evergreen where I can. But I mean, also, so. some of that is something that you could discuss because the view permissions are like exist because mm -hmm. like our libraries can log in and look at their circulation policies they just can't edit them mm -hmm. so it might be a bigger consortium conversation because right. some of that's possible now oh oh yes no i was just yeah. oh yeah want to make sure that it doesn't get lost mm. if, if somehow some of those yeah. If, if we wanted to be like, here's this unified settings and you can't see what you didn't at what you can't edit, I wouldn't want that. So but right yeah. now those yeah. things on the on those two pages 
their permissions to view some of those things. I don't think that those are controlled by permissions in the permission editor. So I think that keep that Ruth. The so on the local admin page and the server admin page, the permission to be able to view those things is not actually uh, given using like a view page or whatever permission. It's it's further down into the 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 server it, settings. Yeah, once like, you're in the actual interface, it takes effect, but it doesn't affect what displays or what you can click on on the menu page. Right, so it ends up being a very long page. <laughs> Why don't I put this on our agenda yes. for July and then see if I can get one of the developers who knows a bit more about how those permissions work uh, to come and talk to us about how we might make that work if we wanted to unify these pages. Do we want because I think we still want something on Launchpad before then, or should we wait till we've had more discussion? I would be good either way. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's a general issue. Um, I would love to see far more places where we can decide what we want to display or hide or or you know have have a middle control of and and uh, you know we're always wanting to get things off the screen if they if we don't use them and and uh, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't but the uh, I feel that decluttering screens is a is a UI issue a, a um, absolutely it you know, absolutely but, is and we had talked recently in some other meeting about putting a library setting in place for all of the top level navigation menu things yeah that like if you're not using acquisitions why is the acquisitions thing in, in the in still in the menu just turn it off at the at the mm -hmm. ou level or the consortium yeah. level like whatever um same with booking yeah so i think that we could um work on that like after we get these keyboard shortcuts in yep yep uh, and kind of decide what our settings are going to be and how to group the stuff in the menus and then turn them off All right, I'm going to stop the recording. I will see you all in July. Uh